Hi, I'm Dr. Courtney, Jesus Professor. And in this episode of Prophecy 101, we're talking about divination and Jimmy Swaggart. I'm seeing a lot of nostalgia lately relating to preachers who we should not be celebrating due to their ongoing or unrepentant sexual immorality during their life and public ministry. Lonnie Frisbee, Paul Kane, Martin Luther King, and Jimmy Swaggart are some examples. Since I lived in Baton Rouge in the late 1980s and my mother attended Swaggart's church, I had something of a front row seat to Jimmy Swaggart's sex scandals. At the time, I had prayed the sinner's prayer and I thought I was walking with God, but I was still struggling with ongoing sins in the areas of drunkenness, sexual immorality, and pornography. For me personally, the main effect of Swaggart's sex scandals and his refusal to accept consequences from his church authority was that I felt comfortable in my own ongoing sin. Even though I was in Christian community in a church at LSU, I simply kept my sin hidden. It came out later that Carter Featherston, the assistant pastor of my church at the time, was also in unrepentant sexual relationships. Now, I'm all for forgiving and comforting repentant sinners. But the issue with Swaggart is that he refused the two-year preaching suspension imposed by the Assemblies of God after his tryst with a prostitute first came to light in 1998. Reckoning that his I have sinned speech was sufficient, Swaggart returned to the pulpit after three months and was subsequently defrocked by the Assemblies of God, after which he left the denomination to continue in ministry. Refusing reasonable consequences imposed by proper authority is a key sign of worldly sorrow rather than godly sorrow and genuine repentance. Qu consequently, a few years later in 1991, Swaggart was again caught with a prostitute while on a ministry trip to California. Rather than expressing repentance, this time his statement to the church was, the Lord told me it's flat out none of your business. The Lord, Swaggart said, the Lord told me flat out my sexual immorality is none of your business. This was not God. This was not Jesus. This was not the Holy Spirit speaking to or through Jimmy Swaggart. Any supernatural voice shucking accountability for sexual immorality is from the dark side. Spirits of divination do have some remarkable revelatory capabilities as demonstrated by the earnings of the demonized slave girl in the book of Acts. This level of a pastor's sin is indeed the business of the local congregation on several counts. One, followers of Jesus are told to consider the outcome of their leader's way of life before we imitate their faith. Two, Jesus told us and still tells us in Matthew 7 to judge our leaders by the fruit of their character as we obey his instruction to watch out for false prophets. Three, in the book of Revelation, Jesus rebukes churches for tolerating sexual immorality among their leadership. Praise the Lord Jesus, he was patient with me through my own sexual immorality in the late 1980s, and in 1989, Jesus brought me to repentance and salvation. We ought to remember that those who presume to be teachers will be judged more strictly, and we can keep a keen eye out for the differences between godly and worldly sorrow. A few ways to recognize godly sorrow. 
godly sorrow confesses and repents openly without hiding, minimizes, minimizing, or making excuses for sinful behavior. Godly sorrow uses the same words that God uses to describe the sin. Two, godly sorrow accepts duly imposed consequences from the local church or the governing ecclesiastical authority. Three, godly sorrow recognizes that the passage of time by itself is not a valid indicator of repentance simply because one has managed not to get caught again. Four, godly sorrow recognizes that those in positions of leadership should be expected to prove their repentance more thoroughly to those who they purport to be leading. Well, praise the Lord Jesus that he does give us the power to escape from the trap of the devil, including sexual immorality and pornography. Praise the Lord Jesus that he gives us, as followers of Jesus, the right and indeed the responsibility to hold our leaders accountable when they're in unrepentant immorality. So-